Hello, I'm Dr. Hoffman from the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia, and it's my pleasure to present this talk at the 28th annual PCF Scientific Retreat, Lutetium PSMA, the newest treatment class for advanced prostate cancer. Here are some of my disclosures and support. The field of Lutetium PSMA has evolved from diagnostics using radioactive small molecules labelled to ligands that bind to prostate-specific membrane antigen, a cell surface protein overexpressed in prostate cancer to both image and treat prostate cancer. This field has evolved quickly from small animal experiments published back in 2012 from the University of Heidelberg group through to first in human studies published by the same group one year later. We entered this domain in 2014 performing our first PSMA PET scan and in patient number one we saw a high management impact identifying nodal and distant metastatic disease that could not be identified on CT, bone scan or MRI. Two years ago at the PCF annual retreat I had arrived jet lagged from Melbourne and I opened my email at 10.30 at night just before going to bed and I could see that the statistics report for the pro PSMA study was sitting in my mailbox. I was debating, should I go to sleep, have a good night's sleep, or should I open this? Because I was blinded to the data of this 300 patient 10 site study that had consumed the last three years of my life comparing PSMA PET to CT and bone scan. But I clicked it open and I was so pleased to see the results, which showed superior accuracy, a higher management impact, and fewer uncertain results published in The Lancet a few months later. And this study is changing practice globally. We now have not one, but two FDA approved imaging ligands for prostate cancer, Gallium PSMA11 and 18F DCFPYL. And there's more to come. And Dr. Jonathan Simmons, the ex-CEO of the Prostate Cancer Foundation said that Game Changer is almost an understatement for how prostate cancer care can be improved by this technique. Now we're going to change tracks to talk about therapy. So we can label these small molecules to gallium or fluorine for performing imaging on a PET scan. But those molecules have no effect in the human body. The radiation simply passes out and detected by the camera, producing remarkable three-dimensional pictures. By changing the gallium 68 or fluorine to lutetium 177, a short part length beta emitter, we can deliver very high doses of radiation to kill tumours wherever they are in the body. We published the first prospective phase two study back in 2018 in Lancet Oncology. And here is the image of the air showing PSMA PET scans before and after treatment in the best eight responders. Since then, the world has been working hard and we now have not one, but two randomized controlled trials published this year. Our own ANZUP therapy study that I had the pleasure of leading and the phase three Novartis vision trial. Let's go through the results. We'll start with the therapy study. This was a 200 patient study conducted at 10 sites around Australia. We randomized men who had progressed after docetaxel chemotherapy and mostly after abiraterone or enzalutamide to either lutetium PSMA 617 or the active control arm of carbazitaxel. We screened men with both PSMA and FDG PET and around 70% of men were suitable after central reading. The primary outcome of PSA response over 50% occurred in 66% of men randomized to lutetium PSMA compared to only 37% of men randomized to carbazitaxel. That's a 29% difference, quite a large difference in our primary endpoint. This uh, resulted in an improved progression-free survival with a hazard ratio of 0.63 and this increased over time, so that by 12 months, when almost everyone had progressed in the carbazitaxel arm, almost 20% of patients remained without progression in the lutetium PSMA arm. We showed better objective responses on CT, 49% compared to 24%. Now, shortly after the publication of the therapy study, along comes the phase three vision trial. This is an over 800 patient study conducted at multiple sites around the US and Europe. And the results were presented at ASCO this year by Michael Morris. And I'm pleased to show you some of his slides. 
In this very large study, patients were randomized two to one to either lutetium PSMA 617 or a protocol defined standard of care. And the results showed an improved overall survival with a hazard ratio of 0.62. So a median survival of 15 months in those randomized to lutetium compared to 11 months in those randomized to the standard of care. That's a significant difference and these results ought to result in FDA approval in the near future. Now, lutetium PSMA is a well-tolerated targeted treatment. The lutetium 177 has only a one millimeter path length. So when the radiation is taken up into the tumors, there is not a lot of damage to surrounding normal tissues. But like all therapies, there are some adverse effects and I highlight some of them here. We get increased uptake in the salivary glands causing dry mouth. We also cause nausea. In the therapy trial, the rate of nausea was similar compared to carbazitaxel chemotherapy. And in the vision trial, you can see there was twice as much grade one to two nausea with lutetium PSMA. We also have some hematologic side effects, including thrombocytopenia, which was greater than carbazitaxel and also greater than the standard of care arm, and anemia, which was similar to carbazitaxel, but greater than the standard of care in the vision arm. But these are fairly minor. They're mainly grade one or two, and they're even the rate of grade three or four thrombocytopenia around 10% in both studies. Now, because of its targeted nature and the lack of side effects, we result in an improved quality of life. Karim Fazazi at ESMO only a few weeks ago presented the patient reported outcomes from the vision trial. And these are the results of the FACT-P, a patient reported outcome over time. And you can see a big difference between those two arms. So pa patient's quality of life is improved with lutetium PSMA. And we th when we think about men with advanced castration resistant prostate cancer after three or four lines of therapy, we can't cure them. There's only two things we can do with our treatments, improve survival and improve quality of life. And lutetium PSMA does both of these. And in terms of quality of life, one of the main things is decreased pain. Here again, results from the vision trial showing time to worsening of pain. And you can see a massive uh, delay in the lutetium arm, 14.3 months compared to only 2.9 months in the standard of care arm. What about compared to chemotherapy? Well, we have this data in the therapy trial because half the group had lutetium PSMA, half had carbazitaxel chemotherapy. And what we can see is that you don't get any of those nasty chemotherapy related side effects, such as diarrhea, fatigue, hair loss, skin rash, neuropathy. Uh, so really a much better tolerated treatment than chemotherapy. Now, with a 15 to 16 month overall survival with lutetium PSMA, we still need to do better. We are prolonging life and improving quality of life, but how can we do even better? And this slide highlights some next generation approaches to how I think this might be done. In red, we have some imaging approaches, selecting patients better using PET imaging or artificial intelligence, using dosimetry to better guide the doses that we give. In purple, we've got some next generation isotopes and ligands, and in blue, some pharmacological mechanisms that we can potentially enhance our therapy, either by combining with immunotherapy, using drugs that increase PSMA expression, or using drugs that enhance the damage of radiation, so-called radiosensitizers. And we don't have time to go through all of these today, but fortunately, we have a stellar lineup of speakers afterwards who will cover several of these. Now, I just want to go back and talk about patient selection because this is not a treatment that benefits absolutely everyone. This is a patient who has progressed after both docetaxel and enzalutamide. He's got moderately extensive bony metastases. On the PET scan, we can measure the intensity of uptake at particular POC pixels using the SUV max. And the SUV max here is 22. For the therapy study, you needed to have an intensity above 20. In the vision trial, you needed to have an intensity greater than liver. And you can see that on PSMA PET alone, this patient is suitable by either study criteria. But an additional test that we did in the therapy study was an FDG PET. And look at the extent of disease on the FDG PET, much more than we can see on the PSMA PET. These scans performed only one day apart. Let's deep dive and have a further look. 
We can colour code these and in red is the FDG positive PSMA negative disease that we really can't target and in blue is the disease that we can target. And this means that by only targeting probably one third of the disease in this patient, lutetian PSMA is likely to be an ineffective therapy. If we look at the cross-sectional PET-CT images in a bit more detail, we can see that this metastasis in the lumbar vertebrae has no PSMA uptake, very high FDG uptake, and is invisible on the CT scan. So FDG makes PSMA negative disease visible, and we think that this is an important element to optimal patient selection. Now, lutetium PSMA is not magical. It works by delivering high doses of radiation to sites of tumours, much like external beam radiation. But it's given intravenously and therefore can target disease wherever it is. In this study of ours, we looked at the mean dose to all of tumour using some advanced dosimetry methods. And if we achieved less than 10 gray to tumour, there were 10 non-responders and only one responder. So it does seem that with some of these advanced techniques, we can potentially better personalise care. We're also looking at the prognostic and predictive relevance of some quantitative measures on our PSMA and FDG PET. And indeed, it does seem that as the volume of disease on FDG increases, you do worse. And as the intensity of PSMA increases, you do better. This was also shown in a recent multi-center study that we contributed data to, led by the UCLA group, where tumor SUV mean from a PSMA PET scan was shown to be prognostic in this 270 multi-patient study where we developed a normogram. Now, another role of imaging is after treatment. Although lutetium is predominantly a beta emitter, it also emits some gamma rays that we can image on a standard nuclear medicine camera. And this potentially allows us to individualize therapy better. So in this patient, we stopped treatment after only two cycles of treatment. And despite that, he had an excellent response with a normal PSMA PET scan three months later and a 99% decrease in PSA. Now it's just the beginning because after vision and after therapy, we have a whole array of studies underway in the castration resistance setting, but also moving the treatment earlier. And we have several studies open in the hormone sensitive space, such as upfront PSMA or PSMA addition. So the next few years are going to be really informative and we can potentially bring this treatment all the way back super early. This is our director of GU Oncology, Professor Declan Murphy, and he's proudly holding a prostate specimen after his robotic prostatectomy. But this is no ordinary prostatectomy. This is a lutectomy. We gave a cycle of lutetium PSMA 617 prior to the prostatectomy. And this is really bringing it back as a neoadjuvant treatment. And we are hopeful that this could potentially replace surgery in the future, replace external beam radiation, or perhaps be an adjunct to increase the rate of cure. Only a couple of years ago, the Prostate Cancer Foundation, in their annual report, identified precision radiopharmaceuticals as their number one investment for the PCF research enterprise over the next decade or two in order to further improve outcome. And we're so pleased that the PCF have both identified this and also supported our center at the Peter Mac, where we have launched, thanks to a large philanthropic grant from the Prostate Cancer Foundation, PROSTIC, the Prostate Cancer Theranostics and Imaging Center of Excellence. And in PROSTIC, we are increasing our number of clinical trials from around five to 10, performing fundamental discovery research and providing some education and leadership. With that, I'd like to thank the entire team at Peter Mac, our funding partners, our collaborative partners, and leave you with a picture of our stellar nuclear medicine team that does incredible work to improve patient outcomes with prostate cancer. Thank you so much.